Gamescom is wrapping up or has come to an end depending on when you are watching this. A lot of information has come out about Farming Simulator 25 during Gamescom, so let's do a quick rundown of what we've learned during the event. 1. Baby animals. Specifically, we have seen baby pigs and cows and can only assume that we'll also see young sheep, horses, and chickens. Goats have been added to the base game, a popular custom animal added to select mod maps, but well, we'll see adult and presumably young goats in the new game as well as water buffalo which were previously announced. Goats will be used for their milk and new productions to produce cheese. 3. Extreme weather with hail and tornadoes. This extreme weather has the potential to damage crops in fields, break off trees, and either scatter unprotected bales or cause them to be blown away, never to be seen again. In addition to crop and tree damage, there was a comment in the blog post around building damage. Will this be our buildings or NPC only buildings? One theory which I think is a good possibility is that the damage will happen to NPC buildings and that will lead to construction missions like the roller coaster in Silver Run Forest. Four. Not the first time Giants has hinted at this, but fairly clear sign from the Weather Effects blog post during Gamescom that we will be able to talk to various NPCs around the map. This may be how we are given construction missions, or it might be how we learn about other contracts. 5. New brands like Prestige Trailers, International Trucks, Novag, Sinboggin, and Merlot are coming to Farming Simulator 25. GameStar a German gaming news outlet released a press release during Gamescom about Merlot being added to Farming Simulator 25. In this machine reveal trailer, we can see the Merlot Multifarmer 44.9 CS telehandler. Now this is the very first telehandler to offer rear hydraulics. I do have a link down in the description where you're going to be able to find much more detailed specifics about the real vehicle. Now, while I was not able to attend Gamescom or attain video from the playable demo, Giants was kind enough to provide partners with some B-roll. And that is exactly what we are about to see here. Showing off particular aspects of Riverbend Springs and the new features coming to FS25. Starting out, we have a Voltra driving down a dirt road next to the river. Some of the things to note here are not only the new player UI, which we've already seen before, but how the tractor is interacting with the ground as well as the ground deformation or the lack thereof. More on that in a little bit. We are seeing a fair bit of fog here at 6.33 in the morning running here along the river. We also see the barges are busy making their way down the river already. And we get a good sense of the density of the foliage that we have both on far and near sides of the river as well as the new lighting effects. Now I seriously do hope that we do not have fog every morning and that things are just not going to be done to the extreme that we are seeing them in these gameplay demos. While the fog is nice, it can be a little bit much. And I do hope that we will have that dialed back ultimately once the game is released. In this second scene, we are taken to see the new greenhouse model that we saw in the first gameplay reveal. We are growing some rice saplings, and the lighting and visual effects of being in the greenhouse are indeed nice. Now one thing I would like to see is these rice saplings growing in beds versus directly on the ground. But more importantly, what we do see here with our Fent tractor is the ground deformation. Finally, we're actually seeing that here in our gameplay. And I do hope that this is selectable as far as the degree of deformation, because I do think we are maybe seeing a bit extreme deformation here along these access roads. We do see new ground textures, as well as new crop textures for our corn and sunflowers in this scene. I can only imagine if we run up and down this access road four, five, six times, if we continue to see this degree of deformation, well, we're going to have giant ruts all the way up to our axles. Now, the important thing to note in this particular scene is not so much the rice planter because we have already seen that. 
but I do want to also comment once again with respect to our UI in the lower right. We not only have our fill type icon, but we also have the full wording of the fill type. This is going to be very useful in mod maps where sometimes we see the same icon being used for different fill types. We also get our first look at the F1 menu or the help menu for console players and we can see where things are split up into different segments. Now there had been a bit of speculation that the view distance circle was going away, but as we can see from the previous segment and with this segment with the harvester, the view circle is very much still a thing as we see textures transition from near to far quality. With respect to our John Deere harvester scene, first thing I want to take is that we have tracks on the front and tires on the back. The tracks on the front are not leaving any apparent ground deformation, whereas the rear tires are. So it does appear that your tire selection is going to have an effect with respect to ground deformation. The other thing that I want to point out is that the GPS mode is set to steering assist. The line above that in the F1 menu says deactivate lane and we can see the steering assist icon in the lower right UI element below the fuel and service gauges. What I'm hoping is this means that we're going to be able to do lane skipping which is a practice that I like to employ where I go through and do my field work by skipping every other lane and then coming back and catching the lanes that I skipped. I feel that is a faster way of working the field because we have a larger turning radius. Here we have a tractor with duels, as well as the J&M auger wagon with wide tires. And what we're able to see here is what appears to be less ground deformation as a result of this tire selection, as opposed to what we saw with the singles on the rear of the harvester. So again, giving some credence to the fact that possibly tire selection is going to play a factor with respect to ground deformation. Continue that thought. Here we have our Oxbow Harvester, and again, we are not seeing any ground deformation that is obvious with the fact that it has tracked wheels as opposed to the tractor and wagon here that are using standard singles. We can also see how this particular harvester is going to unload. It's going to raise the basket up, then we're going to have the side tilt out, and we're going to unload. We can see the fill capacity here is at 27,000 liters, 77%. But one thing that I think is important to note here is the slow rate at which this particular harvester unloads. Now I do wanna circle back real quick with respect to our tire selection and ground deformation. Way back in FS17, toward the end, there was a beta release of a ground compaction mod. I really did enjoy my gameplay with that compaction mod. Sadly, it didn't make its way into 19 or 22, but with ground deformation, I would like to possibly see ground compaction added as either a base game feature, or hopefully it can come to the game as a mod. Now, I do wish that the gameplay that was captured for us was not done all at 6.30 in the morning, so we can see some clear skies and some real beauty of Riverbend Springs, instead of seeing it hidden behind mostly this level of fog. Here we have the pre-order bonus, Macdon Swather cutting a field of wheat so that a harvester come by later with the new Macdon pickup header and collect it for processing. We have a new brand in Novag making its appearance here. And what's notable about this clip is we can see the tire deformation of the tractor and the fact that the cedar is wiping away all of that tire deformation behind it. We continue to see this trend of tracks not leaving tire deformation. And of course, the reason behind that is the size of the contact patch. 
A tire has a much smaller contact surface with the ground as opposed to tracks, and therefore the amount of pressure per square inch or possibly per square centimeter for everyone outside the US is significantly less on tracks. The new telescopic Senbagen Telehandler, which was first revealed in the Gamescom trailer, is seen here, and it's collecting a bale of hay that's going to be taking it over to feed our new calves and cows. What we can see is some really great animations of those calves and cows in the background, from the youngest struggling to stand up and walk. Meanwhile, we have slightly older calves jumping around. Something else we can see from the scene is that our hay bale is going to be 8,000 liters in capacity. Quite possibly the bale capacities are going to be carrying over from FS22 to FS25. In what is quite possibly the most extreme case of ground deformation we have seen so far, we have a New Holland circling the field and then attaching to a planter. Well, I can't quite make out the brand of this planter, it does appear to be a new model. Once again, we can see here where the ground deformation is being removed as a result of the planter moving its way through the field. And as we close out our Gamescon B-roll video, we do see the appearance of the tornado, which I have to say for me was probably the most shocking thing in the Gamescom trailer. Now, I do hope that we do not see a tornado with much frequency because I do feel that many players are going to simply deactivate that as soon as possible. What a busy week with all the news coming out of Gamescom, either via trailer, blog posts, gameplay videos published by creators and attendees, as well as other gaming-centric outlets like GameStar with the Merlot reveal and Sega announcing a partnership with Giants to distribute physical copies of FS25 in the Japanese and surrounding area markets. Has any of this information revealed this week motivated you to pre-order? If so, please consider using my affiliate code and link in the description. While I do get a small percent of the sale, it also helps move us closer to becoming a gold partner. Regretfully, this link is only going to work for PC players as it does redeem for a digital copy of the game from the Giants eShop. Those of you who are looking for a physical copy of the game, either in the format of the Collector's Edition, Xbox or PlayStation, or Standard PC Edition, you can do so using my Amazon affiliate link also in the description. Whatever you choose to do, please click on that like button to let YouTube know it's a good idea to recommend this video to others with similar viewing habits, as well as subscribing so that you can get notifications on new uploads around Farming Simulator 25 news and after release. This channel will be your go-to source for all things Farming Simulator, including live streams, how-to videos, and map guides. Until next time, happy farming!